Hi guys, welcome back. So I know you guys have been waiting for a video about cosmetic chemistry and here you go. It's here and it's around foundations. So today I want to kind of touch on foundations, how long they've been in the market, the order of edition of foundations. Today we're really just going to have a lecture on foundations. How's that? So foundations have obviously been around for such a long time and it started with the Greek people and what the Greek women would do is they would apply lead powder on their faces and chalk just to lighten their skin. They believed that lightening their skin was the equivalent to having amazing foundation and shortly after that the Roman women would use things like lead, chalk and uh, tin oxides on their skin as their foundation and obviously these women were using really toxic chemicals on their skin uh, to lighten their skin and didn't know that you know these things are hurting their skin. Fast forward to now in the more modern times uh, we obviously have a lot more options. We no longer have to use chalk and crazy chemicals like that on our skin to lighten our skin or use as foundation. So the current popular foundation types right now are the use and price powders and the emulsion based foundation which is probably the most popular one. Before I get into all that, I'm going to talk about all the types of coverages that we currently have on the market and talk about how much pigments are in them just so that we have a better segue into the types of foundations in the market. The first type of coverage that we have in the market is the sheer coverage which is BB creams or CC creams which are sort of just to target like little spots in your face. They don't particularly cover like large spots or anything like that. They're just for like touch-ups. This one obviously has a least amount of pigment and it will not hide discolorations in the skin but it will minimize hyperpigmentation in your skin. These products have less than 5% pigments. Lights coverage which is the next coverage you have this one covers unevenness in the skin and slight blotchiness in the skin it's not a pink enough to cover things like freckles this one does have five to ten percent pigment medium coverage would be the third one this one has 10 to 15 percent pigment it covers things like freckles discolorations blotchiness hyperpigmentation and red marks left by pimples and the last and final one we have is full coverage and obviously we know that we can build up to full coverage as part of the last foundation i talked about on this channel which is the fancy beauty foundation it can be built up to whatever coverage you want it to as most foundations in the market to be honest because that way retailers can make their money right <laughs> it doesn't make any sense making full coverage when you can when you can't build it down but you can build up Okay, so this one, you guessed it, has 15% pigment in it. It is known as a camouflage coverage. It's a corrective coverage. It can cover your whole life. It can change your face, give you a whole new identity. Yes, it will. Try the Kat Von D Full Lock It Foundation and you can testify that it does. This is the biggest coverage that we have on the market. Definitely great for people that have really, really bad acne scarring, really bad black spots or just spots that for whatever reason won't go away. This type of foundation will cover it. Also people that have tattoos, this is great for you to cover all those tattoos. Now that that's out of the way and you guys are asking, what is pigment? Pigment is basically two ingredients. So titanium dioxide and iron oxides, which pigment in this case would be like pigment in your skin tone, right? How much of this is used in a product or a foundation in this case would determine how dark or how light it'll be. Now we're going to dabble more into those types of foundations that we have currently in the market and sort of elaborate on that. Like I said earlier, foundations were pretty much abused by the earlier women, but thank God we don't have to do that anymore. And the most popular foundation currently is the emulsion-based foundation, like I said. And this foundation first started as a oil and water formulation, but for the past couple of years, it's been mostly a water into oil foundation. And the reason being that your skin, your normal skin, has hydrophobic surface. The previous formulations that had the oil into water foundations will have like the hydrophilic, which is water loving property to it, and the skin wasn't taking it very well. And you guys know water and oil don't mix, so that didn't work. But since the past couple of years that most formulators have switched to water into oil, it leaves the surface of the foundation as hydrophobic. So oil and oil, best friends. So yeah, that's what's uh, happened here. And sometimes you also have water going into silicone, but yeah, so it's mostly just two formula types of formulations that we have in the market currently. Obviously, this formulation has been developed over the years. The past 20 years has changed so much. I remember back in the 90s, you guys remember the 90s supermodels will always have like 
white faces that was hideous but obviously now with all the craze about foundations which by the way you guys you guys think that there's like a craze in like beauty products now it's like every freaking celebrity has a product it's crazy i'm here for it though go make this coins yes 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 <laughs> First thing you always have in your formulation is water. Water always goes in first, and then humectant, such as butylene glycol, glycerin, and emulsifier to stabilize a product, give it good texture. Your emollient or silicones to help you feel good on the skin. Your pigments, titanium dioxide, can be coated with zinc oxide or iron oxides. Your preservatives, which a lot of formulators now prefer not to use parabens, which is great. Dispersing agents to help all these coatings disperse in the formulation. And chelating agents to improve preservation. For loose powders, you have a filler, emollients, pigments, iron oxides, coverage pigments, and preservatives. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.